Hi there. This video will describe how to change the default lighting uh, to add global illumination. We're not going to get into a whole bunch of specific attribute changes, but we will talk about how to uh, quickly improve the lighting uh, by using global illumination. So right now I just have the directional light in here, the default directional light. Uh, and when I go play, this is a first person point of view kind of template. Uh, the line is pretty good. It's, it's kind of a little bit bright, so uh, it's overblown a little bit. And then also the shadows. So if I look at the shadows, everything in the shadows is completely black, which makes it very difficult to be able to see certain aspects of my level. Even if I'm in the shadow area, I can't really see a lot of depth or any of the lighting detail bounce back off of the lights. So what we can do quickly is uh, add global illumination. This is in the lighting rendering settings to be able to drastically improve the lighting here. And then we'll come back and maybe adjust the light intensity and light color a little bit. So let's get out of play mode. So I'm not going to make too many changes to my actual directional light right now. But I am going to go up to window and rendering and lighting. All right, so this will pull up a separate window. Uh, this is the lighting window. And uh, if you already have uh, default lighting settings, uh, then you can use that one, but I've deleted mine. Uh, so in the lighting settings, you can always create a new one uh, for your customized lighting settings for your project. So let's create new lighting settings. Uh, and I'm going to put this in my main assets folder. And we'll call this one base lighting settings. There you go. All right. So, so this way now I can make changes to my overall lighting. So what's called global illumination is bounce back lighting. It's lighting that we have one major light source in our scene, which is our directional light right here. And it's coming from the top left down to the bottom right. You can see it from the shadow angle. But it's not actually calculating with the lights bouncing off of the ground and then hitting the wall surface. Because uh, in, real, in a real life standpoint, the lighting would uh, be bounced back off of other surfaces and dissipate away the more it bounces off of surfaces. So these areas wouldn't be completely black and shadow. Uh, we'd be able to see some of that detail. So that's what's called global illumination. In the lighting basic settings in Unity, uh, we can bake the lighting down into what's called light maps. So every object that's in our world has a texture set uh, that has a 0 to 1 UV space. Uh, 2D texture coordinates of the visual look, so like this chest here, the visual textural look of that. And then uh, as we render out lighting in game engines, we can use the 1 to 2 UV space to build light maps, which are basically uh, black and white gray value maps that hold the lighting detail, where the shadows are, uh, where the highlight for the light is, uh, what areas are in light versus in shadow, uh, and bakes it onto a light map or the second set of UVs for every object so that way as we're playing the game we don't have to render the lighting in real time. So this is a way for us to still get global illumination that bounce back lighting but then to bake it down so it renders faster whenever we're playing the game. So that's what we're going to use here. So uh, every time we change this we either need to come back into this window and click generate lighting or we could turn on auto generate. So we'll come back to that one. But the first thing we're going to check is to make sure mixed lighting is turned on so we can have some opportunity if we need a light that does dynamically move, changes brightness, or animate around the scene. Uh, that can still produce lighting on a frame by frame basis and not be baked. But any light that is not going to change like this directional light, we can bake that light now. So that's what mixed lighting is going to be. So make sure bake globe illumination is on and the lighting mode. Let's change this to baked indirect. All right, so it gives you some indications as mixed lights provide real time direct lighting while indirect light is baked into light maps and light probes. So, underneath that, we have a couple of choices for the light mapper of how it's producing the lighting it's a CPU or GPU. We're just going to leave this as a default progressive CPU, and I'm actually not going to change anything here. I'm going to leave all the default settings here. So, with those couple of quick changes, baked global illumination, we create a new light setting, lighting mode to baked indirect. I'm just going to click on this generate lighting button. And it's going to run through down the bottom right, uh, run through the process of lighting the scene here. Um, so now if I go look at my shadows, I have bounce back lighting in my scene. My light is really bright now, 
But I now see bounce back line there. The shadows aren't completely black. So with that uh, baked lighting, I can come in here and decrease my intensity for my directional light. Let's say 0 0.7, 0 0.5. Maybe we'll add a little bit more color to it, a little bit more yellow. That looks pretty good to me. Look at the rest of my scene and see how that looks. Uh, so I can decrease my intensity and then go back into my lighting settings and do generate lighting. And that will override the previous light maps with our new adjustments for the lighting. So anytime you're making adjustments to lighting, uh, light angle and things like that, you need to go back and generate the lighting. We can also then turn on auto generate, which takes up processing time. So if you want to reduce the amount of processing time uh, as you're making adjustments to lighting, then just turn off auto generate. But now if I come in here and take my light and let's rotate it a little more, let's make it a little bit uh, lower of a light, it's going to reprocess that lighting for me. Uh, on the fly. So auto generates nice because it can give us more opportunities to um, see the lighting change in real time but it does have to process it. Uh, so it will take processing power whenever you do that. Uh, so that looks pretty good. So that is definitely a drastically drastic improvement to the lighting. Our shadows are now uh, not completely black. The lights bouncing off of other objects. So that's a very quick demo of how to use the lighting settings to bake lighting and to create global illumination.